Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. Sterile! Sterile! Sterile. Yeah, that's sterile. This is episode 171, recorded February 10th, 2024. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Jeff Moore. Not halfway sterile. All the way sterile. Par not yeah. partially sterile. It's like It's like being... Completely sterile. Partially pregnant, right? Not completely. <laughs> On this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror films released since the beginning of time through 1969. In each episode, we discuss the monsters, psychos, spirits, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since... The dawn, oh, <clears throat> the dawn of film history. <laughs> Remember, we said the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly. Okay. Um, when you said ugly, you weren't talking. You were not talking about me. With me this week are my co-host, <laughs> Chad Hunt, co-host of all of those DOH things, classic here, seventies and eighties. How you doing, Chad? Well, I was thinking while I was watching this movie, and I was like, <laughs> "You were thinking, yeah, yeah." And shouldn't, uh, shouldn't think when you sleep. I was used I, during all the walking scenes. I was thinking, and uh, and I was there like, was no there was no singing or dancing scene. So no, so I was bored. So I started that, thinking, that <laughs> and I was like, "You know, Chad, you have more years behind you than in front of you." So oh, no. when you're on your deathbed, you know, the last thing you're going to think of is, you know, I could have used that hour and 15 yeah. minutes back that I wasted watching this fucking movie. <laughs> I'd only spent less time watching people walking. <laughs> like of the dinosaur planet. <laughs> anyway, that's how I'm doing. All right. So, well, I'm glad, so glad you're here, buddy. Also with Glad us is here. Daphne, who is awesome, stupendous, likable. So, Daphne, how you doing? I'm doing real good. It sounds <laughs> like I'm doing better than Chad, but <laughs> there was a lot of walking. Absolutely, it was a there hell was. of a lot of walking. <laughs> I was tired when I finished watching this. The sets were big. We didn't need to see him walk all the way across the set and out the triangular door every time. <laughs> All right. Well, late, later they did run. So, <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Uh, that just also because the is... clip clops went a lot uh, faster. <laughs> clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop. Yes. Mm -hmm. Doc Rotten is also with us. How are you doing, Doc? Oh, just splendid. <laughs> Doc's getting ready. You know what? <laughs> I think the day before this goes live, you will be cruising. Cruising. Ooh. See, si, see, si, senor. <laughs> you and Crystal and Dirk. Dirk, Crystal, me. Yep, that's right. It shall be fun. <laughs> nice. Dirk's fired up. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. We decades of war <laughs> the classic era. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to make people feel bad if they didn't sign up. Um, did you sign up? I did not sign up. I'm, mm. I'm a claustrophobic. Uh, I can't do it. I, I can't even think about it. Nope. Scaring chat away. What, what just, <laughs> just happened? happened? All right. Decades of horror and gruesome magazine are partnering with play now media on several of their streaming channels. In particular, the, uh, classic era is on the classic sci-fi movie channel. The Classic Horror Movie Channel and the Wicked Horror TV Channel. So check us out there. And in fact, today's offering is on the Classic Sci-Fi Movie Channel. Um, so check it out. Lots of good stuff offered there. We like them. They got we got they got everything starting with episode ninety one. So the last eighty episodes. That's a lot of episodes. It is. It is. And by the way, we are a spoiler podcast. Um, in particular, there are things about this that, you know, 
we don't want to spoil. What? <laughs> we're gonna start, what is there to spoil? <laughs> we're going to start off by giving some basic details. Uh, then we'll uh, do our first impressions, uh, some taglines. And you know, sometimes it seems like, well, I'll just save that for later. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll, we'll move teased. on down the road about <laughs> stuff we want to talk about in general. So the movie, the topic for today's discussion is Beyond the Time Barrier. It seemed like it had to be said that way. Uh, the director is Edgar G. Ulmer, written by Arthur C. Pierce. The cast includes John Clark, Darlene Tompkins, Ariane Ulmer, mm. Vladimir Sokolov, or Sokolov, might be a safer way to say it, Sokolov, Stephen <laughs> Bacassi, and John Van Drelen, and Boyd Red Morgan. The production company is Miller Consolidated Pictures. It was distributed by AIP, filmed in Texas at real live air bases and, and stuff. Uh, no studio work. Filming dates April 8th to 18th, 1959. And notice that's like nine or 10 days. Uh, release date July <laughs> 1960. And the budget is estimated to be $125,000 was also known as The Last Barrier. That was a working title. And in uh, Mexico, it was Tras Traspasando la Barrera del Tiempo, Crossing the Time Barrier. And in French, which I have no idea how to say it. Daphne, you know some French? I know the French version is just beyond la time barrier. Nah. <laughs> la Voyager de la Espace. I don't know. The Space Traveler. That's how more Italian there than French. Uh, we'll yeah, I don't know. I didn't say it right. That's fine. Uh, the synopsis. <laughs> In 1960, my eyes just fogged up. In 1960, a military test pilot is caught in a time warp that propels him to the year 2024, where the he finds future. a has sterilized the world's population. Sterile? And Sterile? <laughs> that airplane there, despite the fact that you might think this is a 1960 F-106 or maybe an F-102, I'm not sure, it's really a time machine. <laughs> And it, and it will go 10,000 miles an hour. In, in space. In space, yeah. What? Or, or just barely in space. Hogwash. Only technically in space, he said. And that looks pretty good because part of the, you know, the, the special effects for the space flight was like putting a cutout <laughs> over a starry field backdrop yeah. is what it looked like. I don't know. It looked kind of like the sharks in uh, Raiders of the Lost Shark. But anyway, I'm sorry. What? Braves <laughs> <laughs> a shark. All right. Well, yeah, that's that's a movie I used to. Whenever people talk about the worst movie they've ever seen, I go, no, you go, you watch Raiders of the Lost Shark. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have they ever seen this movie? Uh, Raiders of the Lost Shark beats this hands yeah. down. Um. So anyway, uh, this is my pick, and. I picked this because I watched this a, uh, a couple of years ago. Well, and I watched it again last summer and went, oh, yeah. He goes forward to 2024. We should do this in 2024. That would be cool. So I decided to do it. And then when I watched it again, I was kind of like, why did I decide to do that? <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, I'm always the sucker. One of my things is time travel. You know, I got two or three things. One of them is time travel. I dig time travel stories. So um, this one is kind of interesting. The, the, it's interesting for the director. It's interesting for the writer. It's interesting because Robert Clark, Robert Clark has a very interesting career. Uh, he just kept kind of butting his head against the wall with these crappy movies. He was trying to, you know, he also did a lot of other stuff, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. But uh, I don't know. Um we got mutants in this movie, and they 
mutants. They, they even the even the actors in the movie said it was ridiculous. They just put <laughs> you know bathing caps, flesh colored bathing caps on them, and called it good. They didn't even have to be flesh colored. Uh, yeah, They're probably but, pink or purple. Or there purple. you go. There you go. Um, they did some sciencing. They did some talk <laughs> about why his ship should be able to go time travel. Didn't know that made any sense, but uh, they do an, a, one of those really neat. There are sound effects in here from uh, War of the Worlds. Mm. You know, like when, it, when the when the ship pulls apart, when it goes, apparently mm -hmm. part of the ship went through the time barrier. I don't know where the other part of the ship went. <laughs> um, but anyway, Lost um, I don't know. Space. But it has some interesting <laughs> stuff that I will talk about later. Um, I think I'll shut up there because it, it's, you know, I really, you know what? I really want to hear what Chad has to say. No, you don't. Nah, do. nah. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> they should have called this Walk the Movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, holy cow, did these people walk and um and walk and walk and clip clap on the on the hard echo huge sets that were way too big for the, for what the movie was uh calling for i think um it's just uh the thing is see uh i hated it yeah <laughs> uh, i just uh, it was terrible it was i just thought it was terrible and uh terrible terrible, terrible bad jeffrey terrible bad um <laughs> I didn't like anybody in it. Uh, <laughs> there wasn't any people to like. There was no one. To, I didn't like anybody. The story was preposterous, to say the least. Uh, it was only an hour and 14 minutes. They, they could have used another 15 or 20 minutes to maybe expound upon the relationship between, uh, what was the girl's name, Tylenol, and, and the, the major arthritis or whatever yeah. his name was. <laughs> or, something, or something. Or <laughs> something if they were going to have a weird name, they should have at least got together and decided how to pronounce it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was written horribly. And if I can't, ex I can't expound upon how much I hated the slow walking scenes, one by one, one after another. Let's go to the other room. Okay. Uh, La, 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 la. The girl looks back to see if the camera's still rolling, and it was terrible. And I, the, the ending, when I got to the when I got to the ending, this is the first time I've seen this, by the way. When I got to the ending, I almost snapped my phone in half. <laughs> oh dear God! And uh, I haven't felt this emotional about a movie since. Uh, uh, what was that one movie called that I hated so much uh, that Joseph picked that time uh, uh, with with von Sydow and and oh don't bring it back in your mind don't do Hour of the Wolf yeah Hour of the Wolf I haven't felt this angry at a movie since, <laughs> since the Hour of the Wolf I just I just couldn't couldn't handle it and it was only an hour and 15 14 minutes and it felt like it felt like I entered a time warp and time was moving very slow for me. <laughs> very fast for the people in the movie, but very slow for me. <laughs> so there's there's a fair amount of that going on. Okay, well let's, let's I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's go with <laughs> No me. Oh no. Oh no, I'm gonna surprise talk. you. I gotta talk about this movie. Um, I I had never seen this movie. Uh, I didn't even know about this movie until you brought it up. I was like, "What? What is this movie?" Uh, the fact, the most fascinating thing about it is simply that the fact that they go to 2024, and it, and some of the things they got right along the way are kind of funny, but then what they got wrong is even more funny. <laughs> <laughs> Even funnier, uh, but you know, because they talk about oh, and they, you know, we they got to the moon. Well, and that's pretty cool. They did get to the moon, they, but then they went to Mars. No, <laughs> but uh, but they're afraid of the ozone layer. You know, 
Falling, mm -hmm. Well, that kind of was a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. really interesting that some of the stuff hit hit pretty good, but then the, when you get to 2024, it's it's a mess. Uh, it's a mess. <laughs> um, I um, yeah, this this is this is cheese all the way up. And in some ways, I mean, it's so, it, it talks, <laughs> I mean, the audience, everybody in the audience is so above this film. <laughs> this film is just like, it, it thinks it's making a mystery. It's not. It thinks, you know, like, it takes him 30 minutes to realize he's not in 1960 anymore. It's like, Dude, really? You can't figure this out yourself yeah. that you're not in the present time. Oh, smack him on the head. Um, I don't know. It it, it has. This is I I will, I will I will say there was. I don't know. I, <laughs> it had potential, but it is straight out of like time machine, right? The story. I mean, it's basically getting the time machine, go to the future. Oh, look, it's Morlocks, right? Um. Well, as we a matter of fact, it came out the same year, I think. Well, or or was yeah. designed to beat it. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah that, well, that's bad news. But is it is this like is this like the? Uh, oh man, gosh, this is like we gotta get it out before they do, kind of thing. Oh, geez, that explains <laughs> a lot. I, yeah, this movie is. It's it's dollar bin basement fair. It's, but at the same time, I enjoyed watching it. I'm done. This is my last <laughs> podcast. No. I'm not saying it was good. I'm not saying good one. I'm just saying, like, I enjoyed the badness and the cheesiness of it. Yes. I couldn't okay. even enjoy it for that. Thanks, Doc. So, Daphne, what do you think? Well, I also hadn't seen it before. Hadn't heard of it. Um, <laughs> There's a reason why. I wasn't even uh, sure at first if I was watching the right movie, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, but <laughs> I didn't hate it as much as as Chad. I don't even say I would hate it, but it definitely has <laughs> been done before, yeah. you know, kind of a thing, or it's been done so many times better that I feel like it's been. I, but um, I there was a couple things that I did like. I really liked um, the scene when he first lands and just, I mean, just the desolation of it, but it was, I thought they did a good job with that. Um, and I think that Robert Clark did a, a pretty decent job acting. <laughs> Doc says no. Um. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm not an actor. It's like, oh, he oh took my God. <laughs> You were just, I mean, it was in comparison to everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> trying to make lemonade, Daphne. You, make, I know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Compared yeah. to an Ed Wood movie, maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Ed Wood has that charm. That, well, that's but, uh, <laughs> you could, But yeah. And I, I also, I don't think I could put my finger on it as well as Chad did with the walking, but I did definitely find myself going, did they need to show that or, or why would they show that? <laughs> Were they trying to get it longer? And it's funny because they even repeated some, uh, some walking scenes. Like they use the same footage two or three times in oh. some of the mayhem scenes. And the elevator scene that we saw that like five walking. times. I, I love that elevator. <laughs> 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 We're in a painting. <laughs> yeah, and I I couldn't help but laugh every time they showed the the dungeon where the mutants were so clearly just so so not in the movie, not part of the yeah. movie. Oh, the one shot when they all yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that, you're absolutely and right. Look that was actually <laughs> taken from some other film. I can't remember where, but it was. Yeah. Yeah. But they, I mean, I I saw that, and they because we only get like three or four of the actual mutants, four or five right. mutants. Yeah. But then they show this whole crowd coming up, and then the four or five come running out the door. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so that I did laugh for that, but yeah, I don't think I'll watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, shame on you. Guys. <laughs> I'm, no, talk I'm, I'm kind of with you, but but. Right. Oh, I gotta say one more thing. Okay, I, okay. You're talking about the sciencing. I love when um, they were going back about their sciencing after they were discussing 
you know, have all their dialogue. And he was just pouring stuff into an already yeah. overflowed, like everything had overflown. It was all over. Yeah. And he just goes back to pouring. And I'm like, I don't, I'm making I don't so understand many <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> boy, I say, boy, what you making now, boy? <laughs> there are some reasons to watch this. Because it's good is not one of them. Uh, so, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> this is not about quality. Yeah. It is now time for... No. Taglines with Chad. Especially for this movie. <laughs> oh, look at them all. Look at all There's of these so taglines! There's so okay. many. <laughs> There's... Why, Jeff? Well, I, Why? I watched the trailer and I... I Pulled a bunch of the stuff out of the trailer. <laughs> I mean, the, you look at the pro when we get to the poster, the poster is like nothing but the title and taglines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. say, uh, Jeff definitely wrote some of these because there's no, I didn't, but these taglines, <laughs> I'd say 90% of these have nothing to do with the movie. Yes. As soon as you read them, you go, What? Yeah. Okay. Let's get this over with. Your taglines for the movie Beyond the Time Barrier are as follows Trapped. In the incredible cosmic world that moves 100 years beyond time. <laughs> what does that even mean? I, it's, it's, first of all, I'm we're sure. only 64 years. <laughs> uh, <in> uh, <laughs> yeah, oh. The science fiction shocker that is a nightmare of reality. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there's, well, there's some strange truth to that. The, but the sterility and the, and the mute part, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Sterile. Sterile? Sterile? <laughs> and his other brother, Sterile. Um, <laughs> yeah, his other brother, Sterile. Yeah, that's this one. Adam and Eve of the year 2024. Only they could repopulate the world mm. in a G rated kind of way. What? What? Sterile? What? Sterile? She's dead. <laughs> but but he's, so, he's, he's so polite when she gets up out of the pool all naked, yeah. he turns around. Yeah, that was dude. Just look. Who cares? Gonna... She already knows what's on your mind. Who cares? Yeah, she already, she already slapped you. Yeah, she already slapped you in your dirty mind. But she smiled like she liked it. <laughs> so okay. weird. Anyway, I, go ahead. I swear I saw this one out in front of Disneyland. A spectacle of the world of tomorrow. Fantastic sights to stagger the imagination. Welcome to Epcot. Mm. Were you staggered? Anybody? Anybody? Staggered? I was staggering, not believing. You know, I felt the blood well, rush out of my head yeah. when I the blood watched rush. it. Yeah. Felt the blood rush. Faster than time Daddy. itself. Beyond the time barrier. I, faster than time itself. I just don't even know what that means. Well, the way <laughs> those guys were explaining it. Uh, yeah, it was everything's faster than faster than light, faster than time. Uh, anyway, the jealousy of a she-devil. Freeze the bloodthirsty killer slaves <laughs> again. No, I what? <laughs> well, it, 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 it that happens, sort of. Yeah, yeah. sort of. It's like <laughs> one teeny little bit of the movie. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> they like partially devil. true. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the last survivors and the human race are doomed to murder in a killer orgy by vicious subhuman mutants. Mutants. Yeah, the guy, the, the voice uh, narrator on the trailer actually said mutants. Did they? I think that's how yeah. everybody said it back then. <laughs> Until when? Until the X Men came out, I think. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure Stan Lee probably <laughs> said, These are mutants. <laughs> True believer. Will you die 64 years from today? We challenge you to see the most terrifying picture ever made. God, I hate that. <laughs> See the picture of your life or death. <laughs> See the world of tomorrow, you. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead and see it. <laughs> Tell your mother I told you to. Oh, my God. You will sure. rocket through the fifth dimension. <laughs> You will see sights to stagger your imagination. You are there in the underground <laughs> cities 2020 AD. You, uh, you, old you, you, thing you. <laughs> you only got two more, Chad. Hang in there. You got it. <laughs> I'm feeling faint. I swear. <laughs> 
the monstrous revolts of the mutants, destroying <laughs> everyone in their way and sexually yeah. assaulting some. Yes. <laughs> the unbelievable journey through time and space. Hmm. That last one was the best one, I thought. <laughs> yeah, that actually is a, a description, kind of. The unbelievable. Yeah, part. I couldn't believe they made I it. I didn't believe it either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Chad. And that's been. Oh, it's been my pleasure. <laughs> Taglines with Chad. Until next time, hombres. Hombres. Okie dokie. <laughs> Okie dokie. What just happened? I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look at the posters. Um, they, they had posters? They oh, had yeah, posters. they got posters. They uh, so there's this one. There's the trapped. <laughs> and there's the other three taglines on there around the title. And the man trapped in the tube and the man trying to kiss the girl and the mutants fighting. And there's some green people there and those are the mutants. They are. <laughs> Let us in, Robert. <laughs> so, okay. It, the little inset looks like he's wearing a jean jacket. Or, I mean, like mm -hmm. a leather jacket, and they're getting uh, ready shorts. to go to the hop or something. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It? <laughs> Biker short or some kind of leather yeah. short, but there are bands across <laughs> his legs, I guess. But it looks like it's the skin of his legs. Oh, man, those are hot pants. Those, I didn't <laughs> think those were around yet. <laughs> You look. I look at the different one, but you're right. Now I can't see. I can't see anything but yeah. him in like leather. Oh, <laughs> the top! Yeah. Really yeah. Oh the yeah. top! Oh my god! Yeah, oh, yeah. with with nylons and, with, and a garter. Yeah. Yeah. A garter, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> he was in the. I swear, he was a village. One of the village people. Yeah, how's that music oh. go? Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> so that was wonderful. Mm. Okay. So you had a flat. Well, how about that? Well, in terms of uh, how about yeah. that? Well, then there's then there's this one. Mm. Mm -mm. There's your. I don't buy it. Uh, how's that song go? Spectacle. <laughs> and now there's the girls in a glass tube too. What? When was that? When did that happen? Adam Someone's and Eve. Fevered nightmare. And that city. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's the. We city. do get to see that for a hot second when they, <laughs> they get, the lights come on. They go, do we do do we do do we do. <laughs> it was very fast. And it was it was so weird. They go from like the shot of the, you know, like L.A. all busted up. Oh and yeah, they, yeah. And then they scoot over and see other city. Yeah. And then, but but they all live underground. So yeah. I know. So how do you build so that city? Sense. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so let's see what's what's next here. Well, we have uh, I don't know what what do they call these a three shear or a, just another version of mm -hmm. rearranging that stuff. Boots, so. right. I kind of like <laughs> well, even, at least here he doesn't look like he's wearing hot pants. But yeah, yeah I I do like that artwork at the top. I do like you know him in the tube and all the mutants mm -hmm. coming. Yeah, once we can see all of his legs, it looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> The girl I'm like the hot I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a leg man. I'm a leg man. Yeah. Uh, and another along in the same. Oh, vein. look at that one! Yeah, yeah. Ah, color corrected. Orange and red backgrounds. And <laughs> wow. then, the all the time that we uh, sorry, Elmer <laughs> Fudd just joined us. <laughs> come yeah, swab, swab yes, come join us. A couple of lobby cards here. Um, the one that's kind of hard to see the the red one on the bottom is the one that had well no the one on the top did too they had the U, U. it's basically the same <laughs> one with different different color schemes that's a teller of a, a B movie is when they go U U Faster, yeah that's, that's either U U U or C C yeah C. witness I didn't see none of that that is none a of damn that thing. and now for the best. Yeah. The best. Oh, I hope it's. Uh, oh, it's it's it, it. If this movie was ever done in color, oh, that's the, what the mutants <laughs> would look like. Oh no, that's Even weird. The green. <laughs> yes, they're just moldy people. Yes. Oh, my God. Wow. 
Pardon our clothes, madam. They're green. <laughs> oh, look at the 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 Edgar G. Omer sci-fi collection. Man, they're wearing sandals. <laughs> Are they wearing sandals? No, protect the little moldy feet. Uh, just oh, just to warn you a little bit, I have that Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> but not because of this movie. Uh, no, actually, because it's Ed Edgar G. Omer. Right. You know, it's, man from Planet uh, X. I can't bring myself to watch The Man from Planet X, although Why? I think that might be the one that, well, that 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 alien is just creeps me out. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's cool. Well, I like that he's, idea. He's too funky looking. <laughs> the Amazing Transparent Man is kind of funny when they have the, the guinea pig strapped down on the table to demonstrate. <laughs> What? And he turns invisible. He, he's got little a little belt over him. You know? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, and then, what does the guy yeah. do that has invisibility visi power? What would you do if you had a, if you had the power to turn invisible? Rob a bank. Oh, I was going to say I'd hide out in the Wendy's restroom and listen to <laughs> oh, yeah. to come in and listen to the bank. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, anyway, specifically Wendy's <laughs> and giggle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is a bad, you know, with the, it, <laughs> sit, sit in the next stall and giggle. I mean, when they look, and there's no legs under that. Oh. Um, I, knew, I knew in a minute I saw him have chili. This Blu ray is a Kino Lorber, and there are the man from Planet X has three different commentaries on it. Wowzers. And the commentary for Beyond the Time Barrier is hosted by Tim Lucas. Which is okay. like what? And then he and then there's a whole bunch of cutouts to where other people talk. Somebody comes in and talks about mm -hmm. the music. Somebody comes in and talks about Robert Clark was their like best friend. And then mm -hmm. uh, there's quotes from Darlene Tompkins about making the movie, what that was like. And so well, kind of well, interesting. Was this movie well received? <laughs> oh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. It's Edgar Omer, though, and I'll we'll we'll kind of get to that. So let's before we get going. It's me. It's me. I, it's Edgar G. I do want to talk just a little bit about uh, poorly being poorly written. I mean, <laughs> some of the lines were just <laughs> like when when sterile when, when, when Captain Markova. <laughs> That needs to be a part of our podcast from here on out. Sterile. Just randomly Daryl? scream out. Daryl? It's Daryl. <laughs> when Captain Markova says, I'm taking it now, you know, and he, I think she, does she kill Dr. Cruza or something like that? And he goes, oh, you're double crossing Dr. Cruza, Dr. Bowman? And then the yeah. guy comes around the corner. Not for long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he shoots her so fast. It's like the, the timing is totally yeah. off of that too. The it's killing just, shot. Dude. <laughs> he like slid in like Kramer from Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. I de yeah, he did. I definitely heard a pew. <laughs> oh man, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I am bad. Well, that's that, that always weird, you know. When uh, when Robert Clark shows up at the beginning, he goes in to meet with the colonel, and they're they're talking about going out to eat, and they sound. <laughs> serious to me and then they go well let's go take that flight i thought yeah. you know what, what? what the hell was, what was that all about let's get you in that flight suit buddy yeah <laughs> see you in 64 years <laughs> okay well what do you guys want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> Another movie. Well, let's uh, talk about Ulmer because I yeah. I have heard people talk about him yeah. and yeah. uh so I, but I haven't, it says, I think as far as I know, well, except for Black Cat, and I don't think I've seen, yeah, I had not heard of him before. Oh, yeah. I've heard good things about Bluebeard. I haven't, mm -hmm. I've never seen I keep one. talking about it. Mostly all from Jeff. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard it from. Yeah. Why is that acting weird? Okay. Um, yeah. So these movies, I just went through his list of movies and it's really weird. Weird. He's uh, these are the ones that I would sort of consider genre, and there's not as many as I thought there would be. Uh, but the Black Cat is like is is great. It's awesome. Yeah, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, everything about it. Uh, Bluebeard is pretty good, and we're going to do that at some point. I had forgot that he directed it. I want to do it because it's like a, a role where John Carradine is actually the lead and is actually acts. You know, mm. does does a lot of stuff. Detour is a super low budget film noir that used to be one of Joseph Perry's favorites. Hmm. Uh, probably still is. It's like a fifty thousand dollar budget, and it's sort of like a cult classic. You could you could see the the cheapness all around the edges, but uh, <laughs> it's it's still. I, I mean, uh, Criterion put out a, a a version of it recently, and then Daughter of Doctor Jekyll. I have no idea. It's I just like the poster. <laughs> the it is a nice poster. It's a great idea. And then also the amazing transparent man. Now he did a ton of other stuff. He did several film noir that when I go and when I look through his films in terms of IMDb, the film noir stuff is has decent ratings on it. Mm -hmm. You know, like six, five, six, eight, stuff like that. So um I I it's interesting to me how he got to doing these movies, other than just to make money, I guess. Um, so did you see anything in terms of, I mean, he, he had a reputation for being able to do stuff cheap, kind of like the guy we did in the last episode, William mm -hmm. Bodine, you know, mm -hmm. although I'd say maybe as a, a slight <clears throat> cut above that. Um, I also read like, that he, um, he was really, you know, like stylization and atmosphere were things that he were important to him and his style. Mm -hmm. Um, he nailed that with Black Cat, I thought. The visual stuff. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay. I've got some pictures later, and we could critique that. But I, I felt like some of the style of the, the, the set design mm -hmm. had a little bit of a feel of what's in Black Cat, although in a big, mm -hmm. clunky version of sci -fi it. Sci-fi way, know? yeah. Yeah, yeah well, sci-fi... Uh, uh, gothic sci-fi mm -hmm. yeah. well they say that many of his films you know, are very heavy on the geo geometric shapes there you yeah, go. which it was very much in this one with all the triangle doors mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. but um black cat has a bit of that as well not the triangle doors but you know what i mean yeah, yeah. angular and, big angles and yep that kind of german expressionism type stuff. well there was a story about the uh the writer so robert clark the lead actor was also the producer and um, he told a story about how Ulmer was asking this writer to do so many rewrites of the dialogue that, and I, it seems to me like Clark sort of hinted at that the writer Arthur Pierce had great science fiction story concepts, but his dialogue <laughs> needed work. Uh, Omer kept going over and over and stuff. And finally, he just got, this guy got so sick of it, of rewriting the same scenes over and over again, going back, coming coming back. And I'm sure he didn't get paid that much that uh, at one point when he asked for him to rewrite something he'd already rewritten a couple of times, he just, he stood up, shoved in his hands in his face and broke his pencil and said, I'm done. No more <laughs> rewrites. <laughs> My pencil is broken. I can no longer write. I don't know. But interesting, it, just say interesting. I, I love looking at these careers. He may have always been that guy, and just got the the right setup with the black cat. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know because some of these other ones are like a Detour is uh, PRC. They're Poverty Row Pictures. You know, companies yeah. that put them out. So he probably had a decent budget on Black Cat. You know. Um, that was universal, correct? Yes. Yep. And, uh, um, yeah. And um, so, yeah, they were, that's right around the top, the, when Universal was still giving out big budgets for, for their horror films. Yeah. And, and they put their, their two big guys, two biggies, mm -hmm. Boris and Bella in there. Um, okay. So I don't know if you guys saw anything in particular that indicated the, the direction in there or just the general look. Or the economy of it, or now that I know he he did Black Cat, which I probably knew that at some point, but just forgot. Um, yeah, I can see a lot of that 
in this, the set wise anyway, and how it's how it's shot and everything. But there was le less walking in the black cat. <laughs> there was. They didn't have all those inverted pyramids to walk around. <laughs> um, <laughs> they had somebody pushing the door up and down. On the, pew, pew, okay, let it down. Pew. Okay. Door handler. <laughs> now, I wasn't going to talk very much about the writer, but oh my God. This guy. Was that the, him? He looked dead too. The movies that he did. Uh, so Arthur Pearson, they said he's just a guy. Robert Clark said he's just a guy that really loved, really wanted to write science fiction. So, and if you look up the, uh, the descriptions of these movies, you just kind of would go, oh my God. <laughs> The Cosmic Man, that was before uh, Time Barrier. Out I'm digging universe. the posters. Yeah. I, I mean, I would look into these movies. Well, I'm looking, that, one, that one starts Bruce Bennett, uh, who a, was a, a known guy. Uh, and then Invasion of the Animal People, Monsters Walks the Earth <laughs> in Ravishing Rampage of Clawing Fury. <laughs> Half that's naked winter. And that's got, I think it seems to me like it's got something to do with aliens. Um, I should, I should pull these up because they were, they were just crazy. Animal people. It's got the animal people in it. Yeah. And then that was, that was on the double feature with Terror of the Blood Hunters, another movie I never heard of until we no, did is. Jesse James versus Dracula or Billy the Kid versus Dracula. I'm sorry. Which, by the way, I watched Jesse James meets Frankenstein's sister the other night. Daughter. <laughs> Frankenstein's sister. Daughter. Why well, I, I get them mixed up? <laughs> what was it? What What was the one? Uh, we just Doctor Jekyll's sister was uh, anyway. Uh, that was that was the daughter too. It was the daughter. Yeah. <laughs> it was the daughter. Frankenstein's but, uh, ugly sister. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it is funny. It is funny. And the guy that plays Jesse Gaines, James was the guy that started in Broken Arrow. But anyway, we're talking about this movie. The Cosmic Man. <laughs> the Cosmic Man, a spherical UFO proves to contain one alien visitor. How to deal with him. Investigators disagree. Okay. It's like a Tom Holland commercial. <laughs> Invasion okay. of the animal people. Aliens release a furry critter in the wilds of Lapland where it takes a woman captive and threatens a group of scientists. Hmm? Why don't they ever take a man captive? I don't know. Uh, a, a, a furry critter? Just a like furry critter. A man. Gonna, yeah. A hairy then, like man. Uh, what else have there? The human duplicators. An alien is dispatched from a faraway galaxy to take over the Earth by duplicating humans and creating a race of zombies. Resembling animated pottery in this low budget sci fi film. Now, to have such I a am so confused. <laughs> and to have that be the synopsis of the film, I know. Me to the, core. <laughs> the synopsis even says enjoy the opening and closing shots of the alien spacecraft, which resembles a Christmas tree bobble. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm. <laughs> I actually must witness look, this. Look at, that, look at that poster. The poster looks like one of those uh, destroyer novel covers or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great looking cover. Um, Made to kill or love on command. Yes. That's every oh, no. married guy. <laughs> <laughs> and she snapped. <laughs> Mutiny in outer space. Mutiny in Outer Space is an excellent one. A, creep, a creeping <laughs> fungus starts killing off astronauts on a trip back from the moon. Nah, mm. It's just ringworm. Nothing, <laughs> nothing worse than a than a creeping It'll fungus. Pass. That's all. Um, and you might think, you might think that's all. Oh, There's more. No, more. <laughs> you would be wrong. Yeah. Look up, six <laughs> more. Six more. <laughs> Oh, and they get they get better as we go. Oh. Um, of course, women of the prehistoric planet, mm. not prehistoric women oh. of the planet, but women, <laughs> the women of the prehistoric, of the prehistoric planet. planet. A spaceship crashes upon an unexplored planet, and the rescuers set to search for the survivors discover that decades have passed due to time dilation. 
lifetime dilation. I'm actually okay. like a medical term. I've heard he, likes time. <laughs> he, likes, okay. he likes time travel stuff. And uh -huh. here's, this may like actually be my dilation. favorite. I don't know if you can see it on there, but... Oh. Uh, Navy, the Navy versus the Night, Night Monster. Monsters. Oh man! And the, the, well, that's good. the synopsis actually says, "Beware of the Night Crawlers; their clutches will disintegrate you." The synopsis is a tagline. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great poster. I mean, there's like this yeah. gnarly looking thing on there. Uh, okay, and I, so yeah. I'm yeah. going to whip through these. Destination <laughs> Inner Space. Um, a group of scientists working in a deep sea research station discovers a strange craft of extraterrestrial origin. I've seen that creature somewhere before. Yeah, the, 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 wait, yeah, <laughs> the creature familiar. is pretty amazing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Cyborg 2087 starting. And you got to look at these. I mean, um, Michael the Ryan. first one started, the one on the top left stars Wendell Corey. Then we got Mamie Van Dorn and uh, Lauren Isley. Or is it? And uh, Destination Airspace, Scott Brady, uh, Cyborg 2087, Michael Rennie. Mm -hmm. um, Great posters. Yeah. They, they, oh, my God. Yeah, actually. For the most part. Mm -hmm. Earth's civilization of the future sends a cyborg back to the 1960s to change the future. That's mm. never been done before. Nope. Nope. <laughs> James Cameron, <laughs> if you're listening, which I'm sure you are. Dimension five. If he is now, he's going la 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 la. la. <laughs> Dimension an American, five. An American intelligence agent, aided by a Chinese American female agent, uses a time travel belt to thwart Chinese operatives who are attempting to import to Los Angeles the materials to make an atom atomic bomb, starring Jeffrey Hunter and Francis Nguyen. Oh, that's just crazy. A time that's belt. Crazy. He likes time travel. He I does think. like well, time we're travel. Get, we're getting the thing here. Uh, and then I think I left I left this. I actually left one off. That's a surprise. The Destructors. Foreign agents are after a substance called laser rubies that can power a killer <laughs> laser beam. Government agents are dispatched to protect the rubies and eliminate the foreign agents. What's the one at the bottom? Did you say that one already? Yeah. And I Altered Astral State. Factor. Astral Factor. <laughs> Robert Foxworth <laughs> and Stephanie Powers. Oh my gosh. I know, I know. Uh, Looks like altered states to me. And Sue Lyon. Yeah. It's... Um, a convicted Nobody strangler. Summer. Oh my God. Yes. A, a convicted strangler studying the paranormal in his jail cell learns to make himself invisible. As an invisible man, he escapes from prison to stalk and strangle the five women who testified against him at his <laughs> trial. That sounds Robert, <laughs> Robert Foxworth plays the police lieutenant assigned to protect. Foxworth. I don't know. I think that sounds like it has some potential. He yeah. astrally projects. <laughs> well, it's it's rated 3.7 in IMDb. Okay. So. <laughs> what do they know? At only 855 <laughs> votes. So yeah. I'll be the judge of what I like and don't. All like. right. I'm sorry. Was there I, walking? I started yeah. looking at this list of stuff. They, uh, <laughs> the star of the movie, Clark, Clark. says Robert said that this guy really wanted to write science fiction. So I looked at his stuff mm -hmm. and he only had like, uh, what, he's got 16 credits, a couple episodes of uh, Fantasy Island, three episodes of The Next Step Beyond, and then the rest of them are these, that list of movies I just went through. And I just, I was, every time I read a synopsis and looked at who was in them, I'm like, holy cow. I mean, uh, Women of the Prehistoric mm -hmm. Planet, William, uh, Wendell Corey, John Agar, uh, anyway. I, I just it's it's stuff like that freaks me. Well, out. you got to give him props for <laughs> going for his love. I don't know. <laughs> good good titles too. I mean, go for the titles. Cyborg twenty eighty seven. Just so Doc, <laughs> Doc mentioned uh, they got some things right in the future. So here's here's our landscape of uh, twenty twenty four. And I'm using the word right. <laughs> Ish. Well, but the whole is. idea of plague, I guess, was <laughs> sort of, you know. But. Yes. It was creepy, though, that they that he, they were describing the um, ozone layer. So, mm. yeah, that too. So well, that too. yeah. 
Oh no, it wasn't a nuclear war. <laughs> but I, I'll be darned if I can figure out why. Called him. Call you know, uh, the top picture is where he. You know, it, so they shot part of it in. Uh, I should. I'll look it up in a minute. But it, they shot part of it in a real Air Force base, and then they shot this part in an abandoned, uh, like Marine Air Training Center. I think is what it was. Uh, Great and, locations. And, though, yeah, I like. Well, ideas. the other thing they talked to him about was if nobody had, uh, if nobody had touched the runway for fifty-four years, because this everything went to crap in like nineteen seventy-three or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, would the runway still be there? And the the people that make runways just laughed at him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, anyway. I do like the only way you could tell that you know they they signal it's the same place is that table. They bring this one yes, table yeah. from yeah. the, from the and then they, he, he hears the conversation and yes, yes. echoing in the background. Oh, I remember the but things it, that happened around this table. Like, like an hour ago for him, right? <laughs> I know. But it, I, mean, I remember uh, Howard drinking his coffee. <laughs> sugar's one cream. Oh, those were good times. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I like I like when he walks over and he like jumps. You know, he's where the like an earthquake crack in the, in the mm -hmm. street or something. And he jumps down in it and then crawl over and like, there's a lot of the walking that yes. what just happened. <laughs> <mentioned>. <laughs> yeah, and it took me a, a good 15 minutes to figure out that they were underground. <laughs> yeah, I, I, had no idea I, I never knew I, until they didn't. said it. Yeah. Okay, good. I, was just, I thought they were in those little yeah, bubbles be, there. Well, that's exactly. What's yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, but and then right away you're thinking, wait a minute. Why does everybody live underground if we got this cool thing here in the bottom picture? But yeah, because you know they can go up the elevator up to the star yeah. thing, right? Not down, but like okay, whatever that makes sense. I mean, the dungeon obviously was underground because it... it was crazy, crazy oh. time. Well, more twenty twenty four stuff. So that more. was that was the uh, the landscape. Then we have. We have some 2024 sciencing. We had the oh Columbia, my gosh. Columbia yeah. Pictures logo. We, we, we all have one of those things <laughs> at the bottom in our house, right? <laughs> yeah. We do. We do. I, I like the way they, they shot them at the at the top. Yes. They, yeah. Because they just blast them with sound, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like a, uh, well, like a, they're, they're actually those things exist now. So that uh, was, like I like that scene too. Directed energy weapons. Hmm. Microwaves. Okay. The girl at the bottom. Oh, there he is. Me. You, you <laughs> oh, you, I'll kill you. Leftover tube from this island, Earth. Yeah. Of the triangle, the triangle, wars. <laughs> the triangles everywhere. <laughs> the inverted, inverted, <laughs> inverted pyramid motif. Your movie <laughs> had new pants. My movie has you mutants. Can I borrow your tube? <laughs> Look at that gun, though. That gun like, <laughs> Well, I love it when they when they let him out of the tube. And they come over to unstrap him, and then he starts fighting them. And then as oh, soon as he comes so up, and that he, he does her sort of me. fake sign language thing, and, and then uh, <laughs> Tyrene. And then he goes, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that." Yeah. <laughs> what? That, there was some more great dialogue in there. I'm sorry, I didn't. And he kept to talking that. to her, even though she's deaf, mute, and can't. She can read his mind, and he kept talking to right, her. Right, right, right. <laughs> Look at me, Tylenol. Look at me. <laughs> Oh uh, well, we have uh, more stuff from twenty twenty four. Tangerine, whatever her name. <laughs> yeah, Tyrene, Tyrene. A little more sciencey. Now there's mm -hmm. there's the elevator apparently at the bottom. It I just, love that elevator. <laughs> oh yeah. Goes, <laughs> <laughs> and whatever that thing was, that was whatever it's of, coming uh, out of too. There's some kind of little <laughs> galaxy, uh, miniature galaxy there at the bottom. <laughs> Apparently, the thing on the top was some kind of jamming device for the uh -huh. Supreme spy software. They got, they got the size right, I guess. I don't know. I, it's and then just... didn't they use a metrodome, a metronome once yeah. also yeah. to blow? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> How can you not love this movie? <laughs> Well, I very... hate it. <laughs> that stuff all looks like stuff you can walk out to the store and buy right now. Uh, 
And I used to have a walkie-talkie that looked just like that. And the only reason mm -hmm. it worked is if you're standing a foot away from the other guy. <laughs> yeah. And even then it was like <laughs> I got I got sucked into the old uh two cans with a string thing, which never worked. Same concept. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean um, you can't hear me? I'm standing one foot away from you. So this is what I would consider like the, they the production design for this, right? Mm. And there's a, the top picture is a picture of people walking. Walking, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and you'd think in a futuristic, futuristic society, somebody would have figured out rubber soles on these echoey <laughs> floors. But no, they're wearing hard heel shoes, just clip clopping like Clydesdales, Budweiser mm. Clydesdales, you know, all around uh, the place. And there, uh, Major Allison is telling the Supreme. I'm from a time before any of this has ever happened. <laughs> wow. Anyway. <laughs> oh, and in the bottom, he's saying, Major, this is 2024. I got some of those. So I just, I, now here's the part. This, I actually thought, even though it made no sense, it was totally impractical. I kind of like this inverted pyramid thing, you know. But even though the More triangles, interesting things about the, it, yeah. The doors, the doors were triangles, so not too practical. So they they were never calling <laughs> for somebody to walk through. They always had to bend over to walk through them. You can only go through the center. Can't go through the side. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, because we never saw the cows. The cows actually are triangles, and so <laughs> that's the only way they could get the cows through the door. And. Everything is bred to be triangular. That was in yes. the scene yeah. they cut. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. We're working on cloning humans the same way. It's more triangular. <laughs> triangular people. They fit through the door. Triangular <laughs> people. Okay. Uh, um, the McDonald's effect. Well, um, <laughs> we're hoping the child that you and well, Triangle <laughs> conceived will be, <laughs> will be able to fit through the door. Oh, <laughs> attack of the triangle people! Anna, 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 Anna. Yeah, you ever see a grown triangle naked? Triangular people. <laughs> more, uh, more angles, more. <laughs> so more, more angles, bars. more shadows. The jail, mm -hmm. the mutant jail. Yeah, it's the bars don't go, you know, straight across. They go, you know, kind of mm -hmm. diagonal. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Got yeah, I did. I did I... like that kind of stuff. I thought that was cool. I'd kill you, but I have to deliver this exposition. Yeah. There's a guy <laughs> practicing to be blue man. So, Almer's going. Geez, if I just had some more money, oh well, we'll just have plywood stairs. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the the bottom. He fought it on me. <laughs> and there's the mutants attacking, attacking uh -huh. Major Allison. There. All four of them. There they are. Yes. At the bottom of the steps. <laughs> and they, well. Oh, happens. my goodness gracious. I, it's, it, it, yeah. It didn't make any damn sense. Why didn't they? My head hurts. Maybe they just <laughs> yank them down and do whatever they did yeah. to people. Yeah. Well. Hey, whoa. The lead is Robert Clark. Sun demon. There he is in his flight suit. <laughs> Yeah, I like the mask that it, you know, because the mask was like the 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 what you know scuba divers will now have the the mask, right, the right. mask now. Well, the, kinda... the the flight suit was a supposedly a real flight suit, and he rented it. Mm -hmm. And apparently, mm -hmm. when when he picked her up after she was dead, mm -hmm. after she'd been shot, uh, they used like chocolate syrup for the blood on her, which I never they never really had an angle to see that. But yeah. When he picked her up, some of it got in his flight suit, and he was like, "Oh no, no, no!" <laughs> he was afraid he was going to have to pay for the flight suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! God. Look at that great the monster, the monster at the demon. bottom. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's hideous sun demon. So, mm -hmm. um, which he, uh, I believe, did he not write, direct, and produce that? But so this guy, this guy wanted to do this so bad, and he just couldn't get it. He got, he did the hideous sun demon with pretty much his own money, and then could not. The distribution deal broke down, and so at least according to Tim Lucas, 
he lost 50 grand on the hideous sun demon. Wow. And on this movie, he made a thousand dollars a week for two weeks and then got three thousand dollars. Two thousand. Three thousand dollars for percentage. So he made five thousand dollars making this movie because he didn't he didn't actually uh he got investors, let's put it that way, instead mm -hmm. of trying to do it himself. But anyway. I like the hideous sun demon. It's uh, got some nice uh Freudian stuff in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. I mean, he's a he's a drunk who's trying to recover, and then he's you know anyway goes on. I like that mask. Legs. And he, I mean, I I was gonna, and I didn't do it. I was gonna make up a list of stuff. This guy's been in a ton of stuff, even that we have done. He was in uh, Frankenstein Island. <laughs> Frankenstein's Island. He was in uh, not on his resume. I'm on a point. Out. It, it, he was in uh, the Body Snatcher. Carl often. Yes. Up. Yes. Oh, wow. Him and uh, Billy Williams were two of the students that have to help out or something. You know when uh, he's getting rid of bodies. We talked. We talked about it when we did it. Um, He's got 171 credits as an actor, and he actually has far more credits than uh, science fiction or you know genre credits than uh, Ulmer. He was the star in uh, what, what was the other one in that box set? The um, Planet Man from Planet X. Yes, the Man from Planet X. And he did some other, uh, you know, Frank Frankenstein Island was Jerry Warren. He did some other Jerry Warren movie back around uh, the early 60s. Um, I'm not seeing it now. Maybe it's that Terror of the Blood Hunters. Let me look here. Yeah, that's Jerry Warren. No, dear. He starred in that. So, yeah, I mean, but, but all along, as you go through his career, he does a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, series stuff, you know, four episodes of Hawaiian Eye and on, on down the list there. So anyway. Good thing he did Sun Demon, because if he was banking on getting remembered for this movie, he's, things would have went south. <laughs> well, here's our love story with uh, Darlene Tompkins, I believe. She was a bit frisky. Did I get that right? He was like, ooh, a real man. <laughs> <laughs> Soon as she found out he wasn't sterile. I, I love the way she like in the scene in the middle, she she like he thinks something and he, well she the idea, but she slaps him. But then when she turns around, she's like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh God. She said uh she said that everybody was just very it was a very pleasant experience. Now, mm -hmm. that Clark was a complete gentleman and nobody gave her a hard time or anything. She was 18 when this was filmed. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And Not they wanted to put, the, tell me if this sounds familiar. They wanted to put uh, a nude scene in for the European market. <laughs> mm. I, I read that too. <laughs> mm. so they did. They filmed <laughs> one, but it never got, it never was put in. They hired a, uh, they hired somebody to come do the nude scenes and they did it in uh Robert Clark's pool. <laughs> well, there is, I mean, she does get out of the mm -hmm. out of the pool yeah. negative. I think there's just sort of a turnaround shot mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but you can't obviously you wouldn't be able to see her face. Mm -hmm. So it's gotta be a uh anyway. Yeah, because he, I like the way he turns around. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so polite. So they had, according to her, according to Darlene Tompkins, they had sheets of plywood. Edgar Ulmer put sheets of plywood all around the swimming pool so neighbors couldn't look in. <laughs> and only had like the most minimum number of people on the set, like three people, you know, like a mm -hmm. cameraman lights and, and them. And uh, what was it? What else was it? Oh, and then when uh, Robert Clark had like a teenage son, 
And when the son came home, the mother was like, go to your room, go to your room right now. Go straight to your room. Go to your room. Don't come out. <laughs> she didn't want him to see anything. I'm like, oh my God. So he looks okay. out the window. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of liked her. It's too bad she didn't get a talk because mm -hmm. I she she's uh, she's beautiful, and I thought she just, was sweet. And yeah, uh, despite the fact that they have her doing this stupid sign language, right? Uh, yeah, made that, up, made up on the spot sign language. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, uh, she she what you know she I don't she I want to say mime. the word mime, but you know she okay. did. She she projected a lot of emotion and character. Yeah, uh, you know, she without did. Just word, her I face. Thought. Right. Yeah. Right. Just her face. Yeah. She's she's you know like a lot of the people that we do in classic. Like, um, she was in a few things, and then she got married and went on to have a family. And she came back and did. It, it's not in the credits, but they said she came back and did some stunt work, uh, hmm. like in the later seventies and stuff, and and stand in things like that. Uh, can somebody explain something to me? Probably not. Maybe. <laughs> They're in, she and the rest of them are in the first stages of their mutation, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the signs of that is they're deaf and mute, right? So is, am I correct in that? Okay. Well, I, don't, I don't think that's the first stage. Or but, I think all, the but I think all, all the offspring were born deaf and mute. So she's an awesome of all the mutants in the dungeon. They're not deaf and mute. They're not deaf and mute at they're all. Talking, no. they're talking their asses <laughs> yes. And oh. laughing. But they, but they weren't they weren't second generation. This is you're you're missing these you're missing the science fiction parts. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, and I got the impression that maybe they were outside too. Was there like still like exposed yeah. to radiation? As, as mutants, much exposition yeah. as there questions. is, they, there's good questions. Yeah, <laughs> as much exposition as there is, they didn't really explain it very good, did they? No, yeah. If they'd have just let people talk, I'm <laughs> sure they didn't want. That you have to pay. You don't have to pay people with non-speaking roles as much as you do. That's so right. They probably like make them deaf and mute. That I mean, way, like, they don't get to say anything. Every, every single, every single uh, actor except for our two. If, for the for the people in 2024, except yeah. for the two, because you know, even the ones that can talk. Or we find out they're not from this time. They're all time travelers like he is. Right, right. One's Even from that, like 71 and the other from 94, cap. right? Yeah. Yeah. The well, Supreme well, and the Captain. Out. <laughs> well, and here's the Supreme. It's not going to help anything. Uh, there he is. Captain Vladimir Sukhalov. <laughs> you like my wig? You like my wig? I like my wig. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a guy that has that many credits and has played that many characters, it wasn't. I, he was fine. He mm -hmm. okay. He was fine. He was fine. It was fat John Carradine. Yeah. I didn't like. He was, he was like came way yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh, that was distracting. He was oh, so. Wait, oh, oh, yeah. Well, he's got. I always got the impression this guy was like, "What, what am I doing here? What, what, what? <laughs> I'm just gonna what? <laughs> he never seen again. <laughs> like there was no urgency in anything he, he was, was saying. <laughs> he was just kind of. But it was. I don't know. There was something to it that was like magical. <laughs> I knew I remembered his name. He was in uh, Mr. Sardonicus. Ah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Played Henrik Talislawski. <laughs> that or his just has a face that is familiar right. or something. But yeah. Well, he plays a lot of uh, uh, ethnic yeah. characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put him up. Put him up. But um, he was uh what the old man in Magnificent Seven was that like yes. the, one of the old guys at the beginning or something? Uh one of the one of the uh villagers, I think. Oh the villagers, okay. Guess I was thinking about the weird never mind. I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> A lot of strange little TV early TV stuff like from Peter Gunn and Yes, yes. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock, Have Gun Will Travel. But most of his names are ethnic in some way. Oh, he! Oh, he! He's Peppy the janitor, and I was a teenage werewolf. Yes. yes. Oh, maybe that's why he looks familiar. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. It's Peppy. Oh my gosh. I knew there was uh, another one. I knew there was and, one. Uh, that's Monsters what from he Green Hell. He's, he's in that too. Is Doctor Gordon's. But yeah, um, so look at his his uh, his names are like uh, Doctor Alexis Rustoff. Chanuk. Yeah. Russian. Dimitri. Uh, Jacob Krubikov. <laughs> Old Stefano. <gasps> Papa Bronsky. 
Pedro a, Rubio. You know, in, in west of Shanghai, I hate to say this, but I have to. He's Chao Fushan. <laughs> Oh, he, no. he did. They did that. Yes. Oh, yes, they did. Oh, well. Yes. Oh. Yes. I knew we had talked about him more recent than. Uh, mission Mr. to Shabbat. Moscow. Was a oh, he played, he played the yeah. USSR president in the mission to Moscow. Awesome. I love reading these old mm -hmm. movies. He did a movie called Two Smart People. <laughs> While he was doing Two Small People, his eyebrows were in another smart, movie. Smart, <laughs> eyebrows are in another movie. Oh, you gotta, you know, you gotta own what you own, right? Back to Baton. I, even, I, I, I don't know. I kind of liked him in this movie. He For whom the bell He was calls. so indifferent to everything. He was yeah. just like, yeah. well, my daughter likes you. Like, yeah. yeah, he was very open to his granddaughter. Was you his know. granddaughter or his daughter? His granddaughter? I think it was his granddaughter. Was his granddaughter. That, that makes his more sense. Her father died. Sense, from yeah. The, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But he was um, just like, Are you going to try to escape again? If you try to escape again, I must kill you. Yeah, I'm going to try to escape every single time <laughs> I get a chance. Exactly. Oh, you weren't supposed to say that. Uh, go talk to my daughter. Well, <laughs> this is another one of those cases where there's not really anything there's no justification for his change because she begs him she begs him not to turn over major allison to the captain mm -hmm. and and he finally he goes go ahead and do what you want mm -hmm. and she's disgusted with him and then like the next time he meets him it's like yes yes I give her what she wants. You go off. Yeah. Together, you know, like, <laughs> there was you no like. Oh, now I know he's wrong. <laughs> like, oh my goodness! All right, and but, so I, I'm I'm going to call this scape splaining. Escape. <laughs> <laughs> the the scapers, right? Uh, they were uh, Stephen Bacassi plays Doctor Cruza. This, this is, like is 2024. Why this movie is so bad? <laughs> why? This looks like a lineup of people in an interview show, like 2020, of why this movie is so bad. To Look at that the truth. Yeah. Well, I showed and, up that uh, day and there was no coffee. That was one thing. And next thing I know, I'm getting naked. And they didn't ask for a <laughs> nude scene, but I thought I'd just get naked. <laughs> I I would. Oh, my gosh. And I, Ariane, Ariane Almer, who is the director's daughter, played Captain Markov. Markova. Markova. I liked her now. She devil, you, yeah, you. Devil. Now that you know she's a she, you. Yeah. she had a plan, man. She had a plan. Mm -hmm. Didn't she work, says but she had a more plan. than more than half the population of the world is wiped out until she got gunned down by Billy the Kid up there at the top. <laughs> yeah, fast motion <laughs> germination. And then John Van Drielen, whose name is Doctor Borman. Did these names sound like? They're hitting at anything here, but anyway, uh, and he says, and have every human being left has become mutant. So were they called um, <clears throat> scapes because they they left the earth, and the people that were left behind were they escaped. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, they escaped. They escaped the plane, yeah, but yeah. They escaped. as they talked they about maybe the going yeah, to other. Yeah, but leaving the earth, right, and leaving people well, behind to. They talked about people. Uh, I think it was like in the seventies that they m migrated to Mars, Mars and Saturn, the Moon Colony. Saturn. Yeah, 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 or by Venus and Mars, right. maybe it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what the guy at the top said. Yeah, certainly I left. <laughs> of course I left. I wasn't <laughs> staying around to catch no plague. I was Mars bound, baby. Baby. <laughs> I kind of like the idea, the idea that they have a name for the people that that left them there well yeah that, i think gotta, that's interesting i think that's an interesting idea you, you got to have a name like that in science fiction you got to have a, uh, a nickname yeah, but i mean also the concept that there's like and i'm i'm sure i'm overthinking this but i think it's a great idea that you know that this sort of another class, reason a class system or something like that yeah and well, john uh, van know. drill and i recognize but i do not recognize uh stephen bacassi <laughs> Don't know what else he's been in. <laughs> no, John Van Drielen's been in. He was in 13 Ghosts and, he, and the yeah. Leech Woman. Yes. The Leech Woman. We need to do the Leech Woman. Do we? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of people in the Leech Woman. Um, 
See? Okay, well. <laughs> that sounded there. weird. <laughs> yeah, it did sound weird, didn't it? I didn't mean it to sound that way. Uh, also, we wow. have, and you mentioned him. Boyd Red. Boyd Red yeah. Morgan is the is captain. Belt bottoms on. Look at that! Look at that beard, though. Look at yeah. the beard. I know it's terrible. So, you know why this guy was in the movie? No, I don't. <laughs> because he was a stunt man, and they got him to be to coordinate the the fight scenes. Ah. Uh, for no extra money, and so, he acted just, just like a stunt. Yeah. He did. <laughs> I will go after them immediately. They will not escape me this time. Remember so, or whatever his name. Yes, leader. Oh. Now, I actually thought the fight scenes were kind of good. The only problem was they showed them all twice from different angles. Exactly. Uh, it, looked, it looked like performance art. Da, 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 mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, but I love it. The air, right? there, there's one great one where he comes out after talking to our, our hero, and dude, he's got two of the silent guys with him, and he just goes, <laughs> you know, he just yeah. gives a yeah. sigh and shakes his head and walks out the door. And it was like, Great action, dude! Yeah. Well, uh, I did good, well, right? I did good. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> also, the 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 writer played one of the mutants mm. because he was bald and didn't need the skull. <laughs> 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 and you can see it. There's a, there's a scene where you can see, oh, that's real skin. That's not that stupid wrinkly cap, you know. And oh. Ten Knox is the beaver. <laughs> yes. Now I only put the, I put this in for one reason. He's only in like two movies. He's in one other movie as a voiceover DJ or something. Uh, but the reason I put this in is, did you notice their communication method in 1960 was a chalkboard? Mm -hmm. But when you get to 2024, it's Dr. Worman explains <laughs> stuff on a chalkboard. <laughs> this is a new thing we got. Yeah. It's called dry mark erase. <laughs> no touch screens. Mm -hmm. or Futuristic. Mm -hmm. State of the art. Dry erase, <laughs> and and actually, the drawing on this chalkboard was far cooler than the one they did. You know that looked like a toddler drawing oh, circles or doing those, something. Those, I also those guys, loved those scapies he, were shams. <laughs> were. I loved when he pulled the lever on that big cylinder. Look, oh thing yeah, and he just goes shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which way's off? I can't remember. Oh, Boyd. <laughs> Well, I also liked when the doctors were um, explaining that and the, with the um, chalkboard, you could hear the squeak of the chalk, yeah, the scratch yeah. of the chalk on there. You just kind of toss the chalk. I was like, ooh. 65. Okay. I've never really been able to get rid of that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> this is the last one. Man, that guy with the cigar in his mouth looks like he is having a tough time pooping. I could not find out who this is because the two guys they have listed as generals have no pictures and no other, almost no other credit. So, uh, but the guy that played the secretary, I, I assume he was like secretary of defense or secretary of war back then. Altgens was a photographer for AP and he photographed the Kennedy assassination. Oh, wow. Hmm. And was on I a lot <laughs> of, uh, you know, uh, documentaries about the assassination. Huh. Yeah. And here he is saying, you've given us a lot to think about. <laughs> We've got a lot to think about, General. Man, I bet he would like to have a time machine. <laughs> I wish I had one. Go back yeah. It's out. just, I just think it's interesting. That, how yeah. did he end up in this yes. weird movie other yes. than he's from Texas, right? I mean, that Maybe makes sense. Was, I'm in yeah. Texas. Somebody on the base that day. Yeah. <laughs> might have been. Might have been. Yeah. Like... Oh, it could be, yeah. Hey, you want to you play? Uh, hey, James, what are you doing? Come here. I like Mike. <laughs> you, got, you got the suit with you, James? <laughs> I think one of my... One scene I really appreciated was when they're bringing all these people in, these military people, and they give uh, our hero the cigarette to smoke. It, the, the this hand he he gets a cigarette. The head guy, the doctor pulls him a lighter out of his lab coat, lights the other cigarette, and the, it was just I don't know. Gives it to the guy funny. who's like yeah. dying on the. <laughs> Why was the doctor carrying around a Zippo and lighting other people's cigarettes? Because that's what they did. <laughs> like, 
Well, there's did, people I, hardly I, smoke now, but in the, but in the future, they're <laughs> smoke yeah. stacking over there. I did. I, I just thought the guy can't shot. light his own cigarette. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jack Pierce did the makeup. And this is, <laughs> yes. This, this is what he did. <laughs> The old man makeup on uh, Robert Clark. When he goes back, he's aged terribly. And and they wanted to make it very clear that Jack Pierce did not do the mutants. So. <laughs> nah, nah, yes. I mean that. Yeah, uh, you could tell yeah. they kept they kept lingering on this shot so much. It was like oh we God. need to get our money's worth out of this one, boys. Shoot him again. <laughs> and he said Robert Clark said, "Yeah, it was the rice paper thing where he put you put the rice paper on mm -hmm. wet rice paper when it dries it." Up. He looks um, so sad. And so, like, what am I doing here? I know. <laughs> the only other thing I wanted to mention, and this is a, something that's kind of strange and esoteric, the uh, production designer. That's your thing. Strange is, and esoteric. Uh, Ernst Fegta. Fegta. -E you can't say that's not legal to say that on live. Ernst on air, Fegta. Burnt. So the production designer has was nominated for four oscars and won one wow so you know the way lucas talks about it is for the money of this in this movie they did a great job with this ulmer described to him this triangular motif thing and this is and he came up with this stuff so um visually it's kind of cool functionally it's dumber than heck you know but, <laughs> No, so I just, that. I, I, I kind of liked it. And the music too, the music, the, the guy that did the music was a, uh, a guy that did a lot of science fiction scores, apparently. Um, Daryl Calker. Say that, say that, say that one more time. Daryl Calker, C-A-L-K-E-R. I thought there was a fine coming our way there for a second. No, no. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to say? I know I went. You never thought we were going to spend this much time talking about this, but yeah, the movie's only an hour and fourteen minutes. This I know podcast, I know. yeah, it's an hour and twenty two. Say, yeah, yeah, we're doing better <laughs> on less money. <laughs> they get a lot less money. <laughs> so yeah, I, to me, this is interesting in terms of the movie making industry because there's there's a there's a big story too behind this Miller uh, film company too. Um, trying to trying to do some stuff and make it big and then falling apart right away because you know stuff happens i think there was an announcement in variety or somewhere that they were gonna do 24 movies a year and all this other stuff and boom they did like two or three and um through a series of bad breaks and misunderstandings they lost all their money okay i will say one thing I did find interesting in is in this movie is not a goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> well then, we are done. <laughs> Built. Oh, and there you have it. Beyond now you know the time the rest barrier of the story. <laughs> in which we find out what it's oh, really like in 2024. 24, oh. yeah. Um <laughs> you guys got time to read a couple of feedbacks? Oh, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we Not have another one 300 here. We, that we, you have on here, but yeah, we won't do all those. <laughs> let's, let's do a few. And we have another one. I don't know if you remember, uh, was it last week? I think we did this one and he came in again. Yay. Put it under Island of Lost Souls. Oh, Tony D. Grisantis. Uh, who nice. wants to take this? I'll, I'll read it. Uh, Tony. Digger Santos says, may I challenge your team again? My memory of this one is a couple of blondes. I remember him being blonde with a mustache. He's a doctor and his wife blonde too. He's sick and afraid to die. And he decides to hibernate her and wake her back up once a medicine is found to save her. Ooh, this happens 30 years later. She comes back to life, but now he's an old man and she is still a young woman. Thanks again if you figure out the name of this movie. Is that a TV movie? Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds. It sounds familiar. very familiar. And I didn't try to search for it. I just threw it out there. Hybrid. Run it by Bill and Jerry at some mm -hmm. point. 
Yeah. Or well, um, they just heard it. I guess Jerry just heard it. So, right, Jerry, write us right now. Sorry, Stop Tony. Stop what you're doing. Hit pause. <laughs> this sounds very familiar to a lot of movies I've seen, but I, I I can't put a finger on it right this minute. But we'll check it out. Uh, then episode 100, Frankenstein. Jose says, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. You want me to do it? Sure. You want to go okay. for it, Doc. All right. I first saw this in the early 80s. Our local independent station would run a Halloween series over a week before the holiday. The films were cut. Didn't know that at the time, but it <laughs> it was then that I first saw Dracula and Frankenstein. Uh, a, few year, a few years later, I heard about the <laughs> now I know what it feels like to be God line being reinstated, which was a partial truth as the laser disc had the line in the word, but God was drowned out by a crash of thunder. Yes. Yeah. I think they reinstated all those when the VHSs came out back in the mm. 90s, I think. Uh, they reinstated that um, from the laser disc. So mm. it, it took me till the legacy. There you go, DVD, to hear the uh, the line uncut and see little Maria tossed into the lake. <laughs> yeah, good uh, enough. There is no sadder, more sympathetic monster than Karloff and Wales. Direction is to me anyway better than Browning's rather stodgy uh, Dracula, a film I still love. Fritz is uh, is a little monster. The Baron is rudely funny, and Clive is a twitchy Frankenstein. <laughs> do, I do wish Universal would leave the soundtrack of these films alone. Um, I'm a video and audio nerd, and I dislike the heavy, heavy processing and noise reduction used on the soundtrack on the Blu-ray and 4K. It, it had hiss, Universal, and pop and crackle. It was early. <laughs> Western electric sound. Just leave it alone. It robs the film of some of its atmosphere. I agree. Me too. Yeah. And I sure would love to have that poster. Classic film. <clears throat> My favorite whale horror film, uh, by the way, is The Old Dark House. Mm, yeah. It's bonkers and weird and just a blast. Uh, nothing the Burgermeister can say could be <laughs> of the slightest importance. That's nice. That's great. And by the way, yeah. uh, Jose, we did that like uh, episode in the like the twenties, I want to say around twenty five or so, on the audio. So it's available in the audio podcast. Oh, the uh, old dark house. So great. Oh, yeah. Frankenstein. What? No, no. Uh, old dark house. Old dark, old dark house. house. I'm sorry. We did. Always through the one from sixties. <laughs> so as he moves through, uh, one hundred one Rodan, Daphne. Sure. I know I saw this as a kid, but the details of when are lost to time. I have a DVD released early on in that format's life. I have a DVD released early on in that format's life. It's the U.S. dub version with Key Luke and George Takai doing some of the dubbing. It's a crummy transfer. I can tell you that as a child, the mega neurons scared the hell out of me where Rodan didn't. I was mostly watching the wires supporting him <laughs> and whatever as it stomped on buildings. <laughs> stomp, stomp. Oh, Rodan. So much promise. <laughs> um, it's still cool, though. I like the Mega Neurons. are pretty cool. Episode 103, The Most Dangerous Game. Chad, you up for that one? Whoops. <laughs> Whoops, he says. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know. I don't, what just happened, man? It's crazy, man. I don't understand, man. Okay. Most dangerous game. Jose says, a friend and I who are into pre-code films and horror in particular refer to this one, The Mask of Fu Manchu and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and The Black Cat as being gleefully sadistic. Gleefully. Very, very true. Very true. Gleefully. It really is very surprising to see some of the things that go on in here, go on here. People who aren't used to pre-code films are often quite surprised at how violent, dark, and frank they can be. This one is terrifically entertaining and just flies by, not an ounce of flab on its sleek running time. This is actually something I admire about classic films. They were able to get in, tell their story, say what they have to say, and get out in 75 minutes or less. I feel like so many films today just go on and on without enough narrative to drive them, usually filling the time with CGI. 
Very or walking true. or walking yeah. or walking. Or yeah. Walking. Just um, like, yeah, I, I, I would add, I'm sorry. I would add uh freaks to that list above. Yeah. In, in, a, yeah. in a way. Yeah. Cause that movie, that yeah. movie is one of a kind there. I don't think there's ever, there'll never be another movie like that. As far as that kind of, uh, uh, frankness about, uh, it brought out what was almost like a dirty little secret. Uh, you know back then you know and, uh, and it was i thought it was a very bold film for the time and um you just i don't know you see gross stuff in movies and mm -hmm. this and that but the subject matter at the heart of that movie was what what really draws me to it mm -hmm. uh, how the diff people who are different and people who are not typical looking and and, and this um it brought them to the forefront it, and it did in a way that like a ball peen hammer to the between right, right between the eyes and it mm -hmm. shocked a lot of people so I, I appreciate that movie so much and that's um, all i got to say about that yeah well now let's we, so there's three more that we can each do because you guys picked them so chad there's one on attack of the crab monsters but it's oh that kind of confuses me <laughs> episode 104 attack of the crab monsters by jesus or jose again <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Jesus, Jesus. Jose Jesus. by another name. Okay. I always kind of like this one. Chocula is right about there being a lot of ideas that don't get enough attention. I bought the Blu-ray and about 14 seconds later it was out of print. So the Krabbies are out there. <laughs> the Krabbies are out there. Was so Chocula on the show that day? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking, well, because uh, Joseph has that website Mm -hmm. Taste the milk of chocula, chocula or something. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but I don't know. Was he on that? I don't think. Yeah, he was, was he on, on there. there. Yes, what? he was on Attack of the Crab Monsters. Because okay. I always okay. remember him going, Explain yourself, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to explain anything. That's uh, your name now, Joseph. Chocula. I'm just going to. Happy birthday, Chocula. I got to go back and listen to that. And, and not to not not to forget. Beach Dickerson. Beach Dickerson, yeah. yeah. And it's Bell Bottom. And, <laughs> and the show that led us to find out why sailors pants were That's, the way yes. they were. Mm -hmm. I learned a All lot right. from that show. <laughs> Episode 105, The Green Slime Doctor. Green Slime. Uh, this is from Wealthy, actually, with uh, whatever. Uh, this movie is awesome. <laughs> ridiculously silly nonsense and loaded with talent with one of the great theme songs ever guilty pleasure and not to be missed <laughs> it is the definition of guilty pleasure <laughs> this movie oh the green slime <laughs> go ahead with laugh. the next one that's, 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 you'll be laughing when you're dead or something like that i forget <laughs> Go ahead, Doc, with Jose's. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm going, I'm still doing it? Okay. That's uh, green slime, you know. I got to give you green slime. I got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Jose says, uh, what a movie. Totally off its head. <laughs> great, great description. <laughs> it's terrible in most ways, but man, is it fun. I think I first saw this on TNT late one night. Uh, the late 60s vibe clashes with all the weird arm wrinkling, screeching monsters. What's up with all the eyes and the torso? Yuck. It's one of those time to make pizza and have five glasses of wine and crank it up kind of fun movies <laughs> wow five glasses of wine um my parents told me that they went to see this in 1969 in the drive-in uh when i was just a couple of months old evidently they were giving green slime buttons at the gates and my mother oh, is cool. sure she still has them someplace i'd love to see those yeah wow. awesome nice we want to see it the green slime <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie so much. And then <laughs> Daphne for episode 106, Rest. Rasputin. Rasputin, the Mad Musk. Mad Musk. What a delicious dessert. <laughs> La Rasputin. I'll have you, you, you have Rasputin. <laughs> um, good film. It definitely softens the actual murder of Rasputin for the censors of the day but this looks sumptuous and has great performances. I think Barbara Shelley is fantastic in the scene where she breaks down upon realizing she's been spurned. It's so startling, 
animalistic. I absolutely agree. Yeah. Um, one thing about various video releases is that is often not letterboxed as much as it should be because the cinemascope lenses, the cinemascope lenses used were older and very distorting. You can see it at the edges of the frame frequently when objects or people look skinny and those near the center look stretched out and fat. The dreaded distortion known as anamorphic mumps. mumps. By not <laughs> by not letter monk boxing it is as much as it should be. I'm sorry, I can't speak tonight. By not letterboxing it as much as it should be, the distorted areas are no, no longer visible, or at least not as much. There you go. Cool. All right. Um, we're ready to uh, tie I feel like this I'm up. in the center of one of those greens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the little well, We don't have time to read all of these, but I want to jump down to a couple of really recent ones. So if we, Okay. Uh, whether you guys can find them or not, I'll just go ahead and read them. One is uh, for 168, The Reptile from Gregory Crosby. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Possibly mm -hmm. the best pure creature feature in the Hammer catalog. And yes, that makeup is far more effective than what was used for Prudence Hyman in The Gorgon, which nevertheless remains in my top five favorite mm -hmm. hammers. Its gothic atmosphere can't be beat, not to mention it has Barbara Shelley and Christopher Lee in a rare heroic role. That's true. The way British colonialism worked its way into hammer horror is a fascinating subject. I believe the mummy addresses it more directly than any other film. With that great verbal duel between Peter Cushing and George Pastel. Mm -hmm. It's definitely time for the crew to tackle Plague of the Zombies, which I watched a few months ago on YouTube. It's, it's still, still there. there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Gregory, we hear you. There's a hint in my mouth. Oh my and God. then we've got a few on uh, 169, Conga. Conga. From Gregory Crosby. You guys down there now? I'm down there, yeah. Okay, go ahead, uh, Doc. Okay, you want me to do Gregory? Sure. Gregory Crosby says, As a monster kid who loves stop motion in general, and King Kong in particular, I have vivid <laughs> memory of seeing Conga on television one afternoon in the late 70s and thinking, what the hell is this? <laughs> uh, Michael, <laughs> mad scientist. Oh, great. There's a, there's a hoot, however. Uh, he's like Cushing's Baron Frankenstein with every ounce of satanic charm, wit, and intelligence mm. drained away. <laughs> 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 I thought he was going to go for a match, but uh, no, he's drained away. <laughs> oh, His satanic charm, wit, and oh, intelligence. Awesome. <laughs> uh, then there's one from Lone Wolf on Conga. Anybody, are you down there, Daphne? Or? Yeah, you want me to? Okay, hey, you'll take that one. Sure. Who oh boy, Conga was boy. quite a movie to behold when I watched it on TV when I was younger. On my first viewing, I yelled, Alfred, when Michael Goff appeared on the screen. Yes, I still, still tempted sometimes. He'll always be Alfred in my eyes. Mm. The ape himself was hilarious, even when he tried to be intimidating. The amount of cheesiness in this movie made me feel constipated when it was over, but overall I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh my god. That you would, well, that'll help you with that. Uh, Lone Wolf is watching that was uh, a Beyond very... the Time Barrier. That'll get ready. Oh my god. That'll... That was a very good Run description. Right through you. <laughs> Gives me stuff to think about. Um, pretty sure I'd have fun watching it today. If you love Ape, you'll love Conga. I also appreciated the short discussion about whether movies such as Godzilla or Psycho are truly horror. I've seen lots of people say Jaws wasn't horror. My response is, a little boy gets eaten by a shark. Is that not horror enough for you? Anyway, great discussion on the silly little film. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. And Chad, are you there? I've been here, Jeff. <laughs> okay, you want to do Jose's comment on Conga? Absolutely. Ah, <laughs> oh, geez, there, Edith. I keep a copy of this one mainly for those times when A, the Michael Goff chewing on the scenery levels is, is in my blood there, are too low, and B, to watch a guy in a ratty gorilla suit surrounded by cardboard houses and buildings tossing Barbie dolls willy nilly <laughs> there, <laughs> Oh, geez. <laughs> that last shot just makes me scream with laughter every time I watch it. <laughs> uh, a film only a mother could love. Oh, mm. Yeah, the last mm. shot when uh, 
the monkeys laying next to uh, Michael Goff. Re reaching out. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. All right. Well, we have we're we're slowly catching up on uh, feedback, um, and there's plenty of ways to stay in touch. We do like feedback, so keep keep them coming. Plenty of yeah. ways to stay in touch. Please send feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or leave comments on the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. Um, that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1920 and 1969. Next up is one chosen by a guest that will be here next time. Uh, and it will be The Hunchback of Notre Dame from 1923 starring the legendary Lon Chaney such dramatic box oh. <laughs> <laughs> directed by Wallace Worsley yeah, anyway um, so yeah show up for that right now it's on uh, Amazon Prime if, if you want to uh, check it out I know there are uh, Blu-rays out there as well all right. I guess that's it, folks. Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the classic era, as only decades of horror can do it. Say good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. And thank you. And you too. Sterile? <laughs>